Hey folks, this is Sean McCormick from Lightroom Blog and in this video we're going to look at a new feature in Lightroom CC 2015.8 called Reference View. Being a CC feature, Reference View is available only to those people who are subscribers. That means that perpetual users are out in the cold along with other things like the haze from previous versions. There is great value in being a CC subscriber, not just in new features. You obviously get Photoshop as well. You also get Lightroom Mobile and you also get Creative Cloud Drive, which allows you to put files in the cloud. So this is an image that I've shot as a RAW and a JPEG pair. Uh, the JPEG is beside it because I have them set to be separate. So I'm just going to have a quick look at that. We can see that it's a bit more contrasty and brighter and it pops a little bit better. The RAW file is an Adobe standard profile, so it's a little bit flat as it comes into Lightroom from camera. Often you want to match these files and sometimes you'd have to do it in another window, like using a secondary window or a second monitor. On a single monitor system, it's just a little bit more painful. You might have a situation where a client wants you to match something you shot last year with something you're shooting this week. So there is this new feature we're talking about now that does this absolutely perfectly, and it's called Reference View. So press D to go to Develop and have a look at the bottom of the toolbar. Press T if you don't see the toolbar. Down at the bottom is ORA. That's reference and active, and that's our reference view. If we click it once, we get a portrait version. If we click it again, we'll get a landscape version. If we click it again, it'll go back to portrait. Press escape to get out of it. So here we have our active image, which if we look at here, we see that it's a RAF. Again, go beside it, grab the JPEG, and drag the JPEG onto the reference image area. We can see that these do look quite different. Like I say, this is the Adobe standard profile. So the first change I'm going to make is to change the profile in the camera calibration tab. I'm going to select Provia. You can see that these look a lot more similar. Now in this case, I do happen to like the contrast in the active image, but as we want to match them, I'm going to make a few little changes. As I hover over the image, you can see below the histogram that there are two sets of numbers. The first is the reference and the second is the active numbers. What I'm noticing is there's a little bit more contrast, so I'm going to pull the contrast slider back down a tiny bit. It just needs to be very subtly done and, the, and brightened as well. Again, like 0 0.1 stops is probably too much. Again, just to be subtle. If we hover over again, we can see the red is slightly brighter. Now, we can't hover and look at the numbers at the same time, so we can use the modifier keys for that. So I use full stop and comma that allowed us to go between settings we'll use, things like saturation or temperature. The temperature looks okay here initially, so I'm going to use the tint so we can change that using the minus or plus keys. While we're watching the color number, we can bring them up and down. Okay, the numbers aren't changing as dramatically as I'd like, so I'm just going to move it across a lot and have a look. The red is changing, but the overall image has become a bit too green. You do have to balance what you're seeing on screen with what the numbers are saying and go for a little bit of visual reference. We're within a percent here, so it's quite close. The biggest difference here has been the change of the camera profile. After that, each of the changes we're making are very, very subtle. So if I press L for lights out and lights dim, we can see that there are slight differences. This one is bluer. This one is slightly warmer, but the differences are quite subtle. So I'm going to bring the temperature down just a slight bit. I'm still seeing this area here is a bit darker. So what I might do is pull up the shadows a little bit and the blacks. I do tend to find that the blacks get a little blocked up here in the Fujifilm profiles in Lightroom. It looks a little bit warmer here, so I'm just going to enter a new figure manually. It's not exactly there, but we're quite close. I do prefer what is there with the active image at the moment over the reference image. So I'm going to go for that in favor. Another thing worth mentioning is that you can lock the reference photo. So if we lock it, we can move to other images and then we can copy across settings to other images and change them as we go. If we go out to loop view and change our image and go back to develop and turn reference view back on again, we'll see that it's remembered our reference image. This is what the lock is. So we can go from there to edit any image with the same reference. So that's a look at Reference View and how you would use Reference View in Lightroom CC 2015.8. Don't forget to go and check out the blog, uh, lightroomblog.com, 
or even subscribe here on YouTube, seeing new videos come online. Not all the videos go on the blog. Sometimes they're for newsletters or sometimes they're just stuff I've done for people that I don't mind the public seeing. You can also join to the newsletter from the blog. And uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.